Hello, hello. And uh, yeah, as you can see by the image on the screen, today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Because, uh, yeah, I've gotten way too pissed off about the situation in South Africa now. And it needs to be addressed and people need to see it for what it is. Because it really is not how it seems to be. The power company is not just cutting your power because they cannot actually provide the power or because their own workers are committing terrorism and sabotaging the power systems with no consequences to those workers. So, yeah, as you can see, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa has clearly stated, fuck the people, who's going to protect them in any way? Because in the beginning of, of, of uh, Cyril's run in the ANC, he was actually the person tasked to go into ESCOM and restructure it. As is uh, even Wikipedia has, has stated as such. And I will show this to you right now. See this, this this beautiful part. You know what? Fuck it. We'll 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 do it do it the old-fashioned way, huh? There we go. Nice and large for text on screen so that people can read with me. Following the democratic elections in 1994, at the start of the Mandela government, the company changed focus to electrification of previously neglected re residential homes and to provide low-cost electricity and economic growth. Following the 1998 ESCOM Amendment Act, government powers influenced the company and policy investment decisions were greatly expanded due to South African government's intent of privatization of ESCOM in the late 1990s during the administration of President Thabo Mbeki. ESCOM requests for budget to build new stations were denied after leaving the presidency. Mbeki would later state in December 2007 that this was an error resulting in adverse effect for the South African economy. Now, I know it mentions Thabo Mbeki, which he was the president at the time. But the person who put forth load shedding is also not mentioned in this document because it was actually Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa under Jacob Zuma. And the fact is that when the government changed in, I believe it was the 1980s, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa is the man who was in charge of going in and restructuring ESCOM. This little fucker over here, he was in charge of going in and restructuring ESCOM. So everything can be traced back to one person why we are having load shedding. One damn person who has not gone back into ESCOM and chased away his little buddies that he has instated there and they get to steal from us time and time again. Like, yeah, yeah, just, 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 just a small news segment. Just listen to this shit. This will take time. That's right. President Cyril Ramaphosa has asked for more patience from South Africans. Patience. He was speaking at patience. the launch of the Safi It's been since 2007. An expansion project in Umkamas. That's where senior reporter Sipa Mandre Gorge was. Yeah, and he asked him about the current blackouts as well as the ongoing public projector impeachment saga. On the issue of uh, stage four load shedding. Look at this clown. Uh, ESCOM continues to He's face a fucking clown. challenges. A liar and, and a fraud. To He's the reason. Get about 4,000 megawatts of power, which are in process of being obtained as we speak now. So until we get to that point, the challenges that ESCOM is facing will keep hitting us and fortunately they are not continuous they keep recovering some of the units that uh, fail from time to time 
these but units are not the failing. Investors understand our challenges. They are being sabotaged. They understand where we are, but they are also appreciative of the measures and the steps that we are taking on an ongoing basis to repair ESCOM. So our process of repairing ESCOM will be ongoing. And of course, the unfortunate part is that it affects livelihoods. It also affects our companies. And what we can say is that the yeah, we know it affects livelihoods. We know it affects companies. It doesn't affect the I fucking announced. rich in South Africa. So that strategy is now That's being the problem. It doesn't affect them. And uh, we will. They've got generators. Progress. They the live in fucking high-end apartments and high-end sky rises an and mansions and spend taxpayer money to build said mansions. Never believed. Just but like Jacob Zuma, who really fucking stole from and us, and people are still backing him, trying to keep him out of prison. number of jobs, and earlier in the day we were at another facility in the northern part, uh, in a company that is in the auto industry, and so therefore there's progress. Lots of positive things are happening in our economy, and I know it's too much to ask for pay. When was this? When, when, what date did this fucking go down? It's like two months ago, right? What positive things are happening in our economy in South Africa? If I may ask, what, what fucking positivity is there in, in a place like this? I mean, it's primarily Cyril's fault and this little fucker. This stupid Z Jacob Zuma piece of shit who South Africa allowed to steal taxpayer money constantly to build what he wanted. And he's still not in jail. He's still not in jail for what he has done. Doesn't matter if he's an anti-apartheid activist. He's still a thief. He's still no better than a snake in the grass. He's no better than that apartheid government that he took down. He really is not. He has oppressed the South African citizenship from the beginning. Him and Cyril have done more damage to this country than anything else. They've done no good for the country. Anything that he has instated during his presidency Cyril made null and void when he came into power and so forth. The only person who could stop this is Cyril because he's the man who went into ESCOM and restructured it at the fall of the old government. Before ESCOM, it was founded in the 1920s. You know, it's right here, 1923. The South African power company was uh, founded. And I can tell you this. From 1923 to 1980, 1990, there were no blackouts. There were no brownouts. There was nothing like this going on. And the moment they restructured it, shit went downhill fast. Because within 17 years... It had gotten to the point where they had to propose load shedding. Now, load shedding is a scam, and I can tell you exactly how it works. So, how load shedding works is ESCOM doesn't send out meter readers on a monthly basis. They send out meter readers when they feel like it, basically. It's usually on a, on, on a bi-yearly basis and or a yearly basis. And then they're going to charge you an average on what your meter reader says. So they're not actually going to charge you for the power you're using. They're going to charge you for what they think you are using. And if they are cutting your power 40% of the time, 25% of the time, up to 60, up to 80% of the time, do you, do you think it's fair that you are paying them while they are for a service which they are not providing and then they are charging you as if they are actually providing you that service? Nah. That shit's a joke. Like, really? 
most other fucking countries and 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 court systems and everything would have stepped in by now. And the worst part is, ESCOM still gets to export power. This is seen as a crisis, but ESCOM still gets to export the power that's needed for the South Africa for South Africa to function. One would think that uh, we would have made it illegal to export power during times where we need to be load shedded, but no, there's 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 no such protections in place. And uh, the thing is, Cyril's not going to step in. He's going to just keep on his bullshit saying that we need to be patient while they're restructuring ESCOM again. And uh, they received a huge donation in terms of going green in 2021. And it's taken them a full year to decide what to do with that money. instead of getting some foreign power companies in here to come set up some wind farms. There's plenty of wind in South Africa. To come set up some solar farms. There's plenty of sun in South Africa. Hell, we can even, uh, I can even show you this. You know, we, we actually have a nuclear power plant that has been standing unfinished for probably the last 10 years unfinished for the last 10 years because it would having another nuclear power plant in south africa we're a small country we've already got one down in the cape and having another one up here in gauteng would uh would literally uh fix most of, of the inadequacies. And uh, this power plant, the Pelindaba power plant, was uh, supposed to be converted to nuclear power. And yeah, it's just down. It it's down. It's permanently down. The the I I've literally spoken to people who've gone and put their hands in in the like cooling water and all of that type of shit. And it, it's a joke. The shit should be working, but it's not. Do you want to know why? Because this man's friends are busy pocketing all the money that's supposed to be going into. Repairing ESCOM. These people are making over a hundred thousand. The heads of ESCOM are making over a hundred thousand a month while ESCOM gets to not provide power, not provide the service that they have promised. So, going forward, my biggest suggestion would be to insist upon a meter reader coming out to your, your property or your flat, or your house, or your rented apartment, or wherever it is that you pay electricity. If you're paying ESCOM di directly without paying, paying prepaid electricity, get a meter reader out before you pay that bill. Insist upon a meter reader to come and check, because ESCOM has to pay for that meter reader. Their overheads will go, will go up, 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 up. They won't be able to get that meter reader out, and they won't be able to charge you for a service that you haven't actually fucking received. That is fraud. As far as I've, I'm concerned. You can't charge someone for a service. That they don't receive. That's fraud. I mean they, they haven't made it right. They're not going to provide you with, with units of power ahead of time. Or say okay next month you don't need to pay. No they're not going to do that. So insist upon that meter reader. Insist upon it. And if ESCOM wants to fucking fine you because you want to install solar on, on, on your own property, then take them to fucking court. They have no right to, to tell you what to do on your property. But yeah, this is just a rant from one very fucking angry South African dude. 
who has just found out that, uh, yeah, he's going to be load shedded to shit, to shit. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's not like <laughs> it's new to me or anything. I mean, I, I have lived here since 2007. I've lived here my whole life. I've, I've never actually left South Africa. Oh, for fuck's sakes. I wanted to display that fucking image, not... There we go. See that thing? You see those times? Those are all the times your power gets cut in this country. All the times the power is going to get cut. And it's indefinite. They've said it's indefinite. That it goes on for a couple weeks like that. Maybe two, three weeks. And it's unacceptable. It's been going on far too long because before load shedding was sporadic it used to happen as needed and uh, during the lockdown there was actually almost no load shedding during lockdown there was almost no load shedding where there are more people at home using power because they're not allowed to leave they can't go to work there was a lockdown a full-on lockdown in south africa as well and uh, there was almost no power cuts back then which is strange if they can't provide the power, that they were able to provide the power to the whole of South Africa indefinitely. It's like I said, it's a scam. They're running a scam, and the head of the scam is Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, because he hasn't done anything to fix it yet. He's the one who instated these people. And obviously this man is getting something under the table to keep them there. From the sounds of it, ESCOM is basically owned by the government, which is fine. That's normal. You know, most power companies are probably headed by a government because they need to actually provide the service to their people. But what they're doing with it is using it to scam the South African people into paying for power that they don't actually ever receive. Because meter readers go out, they read your meter, and then ESCOM will charge you an average according to what your meter says. Now, I would like for meter readers to go out uh, every single month and you get charged for what you've actually used. Not for an average. And people on prepaid don't actually need to worry because they won't get charged either way because power goes off, your prepaid meter goes off. Prepaid meter comes on and it will check, it, it, it will just show the amount of units that you have bought and it will keep ticking down. So ESCOM can't be making too much of a profit off of you there except for the profit that they're actually supposed to be making. So yeah, it's time for change in South Africa. And change is not going to come from this fucknut called Cyril Ramaphosa. So I would suggest the South African people start uh, going after those heads of, of ESCOM and asking them what the fuck's going on. The people Cyril instated, not this new guy who came in two years ago, the people Cyril instated into ESCOM. We need to go and ask them what the fuck's going on and why the fuck they are doing this to the South African people. It's been going on since 2007 and it's been going on way too long. Anyhow, that's just me. That's This is what I'm going to talk about today. No episode today. Because, uh, well, I don't actually have the fucking time to edit an episode. So just 20 minutes of rambling from an angry fucking South African about a dipshit who changed the power company where he had no right stepping his feet into. They should have left it and it would have kept working. But no, you have to fix what ain't broken, right, Mr. Cyril? Right, Mr. ANC?
have to fix what ain't broken. Was, I mean, God, why restructure something that's worked so well for almost a hundred years? And the biggest issue I have with his restructuring is that he did not instate competent people, educated people, people from, I, I, I don't care if they were African or not. Skin color doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is qualification to be in the position that you're in. And the man could have looked for for the people that he wanted. If he wanted a specific skin color, sure, he could have gotten it from America. He could have gotten it from Europe. He could have gotten probably people in from France. He could have gotten it from anywhere else in the world where the people were qualified to actually run a power company. And that's the thing, he didn't. He put in the closest friends of his, people who he thought of businessmen, and that's the problem. We didn't need businessmen in ESCOM. We needed experts in ESCOM. And this man put in what he thought is best. So, yeah. <sighs> that's it. 20 minutes of an angry rant. And I'm sorry if you didn't enjoy the video. But yeah, I just had to kind of get this off my chest because it, it just feels like South Africa's fucking blind.